to God and country. Welcome to another lecture series. The People's Constitution, the People's Constitution Commission has been working hard across all sectors to ensure that all voices are being heard, are being listened to. We've attended lectures at the University of Belize. We've attended Zoom meetings with well-known voices across the Caribbean. And today is no exception. Belizeans must learn about their constitution. There is a number that rings in my head that says that close to 98% of Belizeans have not read the constitution. Don't know much about it. Days like today seek to educate and empower our citizens to know what we have and perchance to decide as time goes by if there need to be changes or what changes ought to be made to improve our system. So listening to our voices is an important part of what we do at the PCC. Let us stand as we get ready to open this morning's seminar with a word of prayer. It is my distinct privilege to welcome to the podium Dr. Father Tony Anderson and a friend and colleague. We're glad to have you here. Please lead us in prayer. Thank you, Pastor Wade. Thank you. Those of us who are Catholic, I invite you to make the same cross. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, you are the legislator par excellence because you have created what is. You know how it should run. You have, you're the author of being, so you are also the ultimate author of, of ought, of how ought, how should things proceed. We pray this morning that our minds be one with yours and our wills be one with yours and we understand your mind a little bit better for beliefs. You're the author of ultimate reality and you've written into our beings a natural law way of living that makes us happy, fulfilled. We don't always pay attention to your law. Man's law must reflect, should reflect your law, Father. And we do that sometimes, but not always. Help us in this process of reviewing the Constitution. Keep that in mind. We want, we want our laws to reflect your mind. We want our laws to reflect reality, to reflect how things are. George Price was a man of God. He didn't go to Mass every Sunday. Went to Mass every single day of his life. He knew your mind better than, better than most, perhaps. We ask you to give us a portion of his wisdom, a portion of his spirit. We come to know your mind. We have a mixed record as a human race. Some of our laws have been
been terrible, have not reflected your mind. All the countries of the world, generation after generation, have laws justifying uh, and abetting slavery. Now in some of the countries of the world, man's law allows the killing of innocent, unborn human beings. Some of our laws have been evil, and others have been beautiful and good and true. The Constitution of Belize has been a gem for the gem. Time to review it, Lord. We ask you to help us. Help us to see the beauty in what we have, beauty in our history, beauty in our highest law, and help us to be fearless if changes need be made for your glory and the well-being of all Belizeans. Your will be done, not ours. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and it shall be, for all without end. Thank you, Father Tony Peter, in standing for the singing and playing of the national anthem, which will be led, of course, by the St. Catherine's Steel Band. This time, I'm going to call on my colleague, Mrs. Lisbeth Ayuso, who is also a commissioner on the PCC. Uh, she works together with me as the independent media representative on the PCC. She will lead us this morning in the national prayer. No? 
There we go. Good morning. Uh, please join me in saying our national prayer. Almighty and eternal God, who through Jesus Christ has revealed your glory to all nations, please protect and preserve the beliefs of our beloved country. God of might, wisdom, and justice, please assist our Venetian government and people with your Holy Spirit of counsel and fortitude. Let the light of your divine wisdom direct their plans and endeavors, so that with your help we may obtain our just objectives. With your guidance, may all our endeavors tend to peace, social justice, liberty, national happiness, the increase of industry, sobriety, and useful knowledge. We pray, O God of mercy, for all of us, that we may be blessed in the knowledge and sanctified in the observance of your most holy law, that we may be preserved in union and in peace which the world itself cannot give. And after enjoying the blessings of this life, please admit us, dear Lord, to that eternal reward that you have prepared for those who love you. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will be calling on the steel band to play an item for us, and then we will proceed with our speeches.
Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wow, that's the first time I got to hear uh, Sinat in that form. I know who I am. Wonderful rendition. Another round of applause for the St. Catherine Steel Band. At this time, we will be having the welcome remarks by the Chairman of the People's Constitution Commission, Anthony Tanona. He is the first mayor of the capital city of Belmopan. He is an avid farmer and agricultural, and he's also sat at various seats in government, including senator. Today, he wears the hat of the chairman of the People's Constitution Commission. I think it is probably his tallest order to date, as he works with 21 uh, commissioners representing a vast, uh, diverse group of, uh, of constituencies, if I could call that, trying to bring them all together, hearing all voices as we move forward in the review of Belize's constitution. So make sure you keep him in prayer. We will now have those welcome remarks by Chairman Chanona. A very pleasant good morning. A beautiful day that God has made by the Caribbean Sea. We can enjoy it's my honor and pleasure to be here. My name is Anthony. Everybody calls me Tony Chanona. And uh, as was introduced, I'm chairman of the People's Constitution Commission. My job this morning is first of all to recognize our distinguished audience. We have in our midst Professor Robert A. Destro, uh, professor at the Columbia Law University in Washington, D.C. We have, I don't know how best to introduce Richard Dickey Bradley, but I would only say a poet, romantic, and avid lover of fundamental rights for the people of Belize, and an advocate that those rights be upheld and protected. Please help me welcome <laughs> Attorney at Law. When I was given this assignment, one that honestly, twice, I tried to run away from. There was a quiet voice in my mind that told me to stay still. Stand firm. And the book of Esther came to my mind. That perhaps we were all born for a time like this. My prayer was simple. Lord, if this is your will, please raise up the people around me to help me. Please help me in welcoming Glenfield Dennison, the vice chairperson who has come to help me. And of course, Ms. Maria Zabane is the commissioner on the People's Commission, and she is representing, along with Pastor Wade, sorry, Pastor Wade is media, along with uh, Lance Lewis, the Belize Council of Churches, please help me in welcoming <laughs> Commissioner I would also like to recognize in our midst, and kindly of stand when I call your name, Commissioner Sheena Pitts, that represents the United Democratic Party, <laughs> and Commissioner Lisbeth Ayuso, kindly of please stand.
We are also joined by members of the Secretariat who will be distributing who will be distributing these booklets. Um, let me quickly correct myself. Commissioner Elizabeth Ayuso represents the alternate to the media. So I just wanted that to be recorded. Protocol having been extended to no other than some of the old stalwarts in our society, former Ombudsman Mr. Paul Rodriguez, Mr. Harry Lawrence, we have Dr. Avila, a policy analyst in the Ministry of Economic Development and the Office of the Prime Minister, pastors, preachers, teachers, religions all, welcome. I'll be very brief, just to explain my role. As chairman of the commission, there's a law. All other commissions of reform work conducted in our country did not have the benefit of a law. You need only to reflect on the work that was done in 1999-2000 by Dr. Vernon, called the People's Reform, Political Reform Commission. Our statute mandate, we cannot go out the outside of this law. Created 23 organizations, 23. That is the base of the commission. And I'll read them out for you that you are aware. The People's United Party, both national and municipal. The United Democratic Party, both national and municipal. Both third parties. The Belize Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The Belize Business Bureau. The Belize Network of Non-Governmental Organizations, the National Trade Union Congress of Belize, the Belize National Teachers Union, the Belize Service Union, Public Service Union, the National Association of Village Councils, the Bar Association, the University of Belize, the Belize Council of Churches, the Belize Agro-Productive Sector Group, the Belize Medical and Dental Association, the National Garifuna Council, representative of the Maya Organizations of Belize, Youth Leaders Alliance of Belize, the National Student Council of Belize, the LGBTQI+, the National Women's Commission, the Independent Media, and the Creole Council, and the Youth Leadership Alliance of Belize. This is a diverse microcosm of our society and it's my job to sit around a table and try to have responsible, respectful conversations on how we are going to approach reviewing the constitution of Belize and providing the Prime Minister with a report capturing your voices by May 2024. That is the statute remit. I will only tell you that if you see me May 2024 with no hair on my head, you will know where it went. But I would only say this. It is my job to create 
balance. All these organizations, their bases, have and will have their right to speak. Today's session follows a previous session we had with one of the stakeholders called the University of Belize. This second section of a lecture is now being hosted by the Belize Council of Churches as a stakeholder. There will be equal opportunity for all stakeholders to use the resources of the People's Constitution Commission, your tax dollars, and all the resources that we can afford to have that voice be heard. This is our democracy. If we are able to sit around a table as intelligent or respectful Belizeans and listen to each other and find ways to, to write your views, not our views, and agree on the contents of that report, we would have achieved our objective. In doing so, we have produced three booklets which will form the basis of our education campaign. And I will be asking the Secretariat to please circulate this citizen survey. What's the purpose of this survey? When you take a document which very eloquent speakers will address after I'm finished, when you take a book that's 163 pages and try to ask the people what they want to write in their constitution, this survey will help the PCC establish where to begin. And it begins with the people. You're hearing my voice. I can't see what's in your mind. But if you fill out this form, your voice will help us to draft a proper questionnaire. This is our test launch. As we go across the country, we will be doing this. So along with the Statistical Institute of Belize and the PCC, this is our first draft of a test launch. I ask you, we are sharpening our pencils, but the Secretariat will distribute to each of you one of these citizens' forms. Please, after you've listened to the speakers, don't do it while they're speaking. I ask you before you leave this auditorium, please submit your completed form at either of the doors to a member of the Secretariat. Ladies and gentlemen, let me end this welcome on this note. We must begin at the beginning. Our fundamental rights and our inalienable rights endowed by our Creator begins with our preamble. That is the foundational bedrock of who we are. Let's make sure we keep that foundation strong. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Chanona, for those words. I mean, I, I want to reiterate the fact that the primary function of the People's Constitution Commission is to hear from you, the Belizean people. Belizeans at home and abroad. It is not for us to determine the contents of the Constitution. It is for us to hear from you. And on days like these, and in days to come, there will be many opportunities to hear from you. You will be given many opportunities to voice your opinion on the Constitution. But how can we voice our opinion 
on that which we have not read, on that which we have not understood. And so the first phase is that of education. And today's lecture series falls under that category. And there will be many more from different organizations. You will hear points of views that you agree with. You will hear points of views that you do not agree with. But the important thing is for us to listen and contribute because we are one nation under God. The next speak, the, our first speaker, because we have two main speakers and then a short question and answer segment. I, before I met him, I heard him on the radio. I won't say how young I was when I used to listen to him on, on the radio on Wednesday nights. But often people come up to me and they ask me how I prefer to be called. And some people call me Lewis, Mr. Wade, there are so many different things. But the one I like the most is when they call me Dickie Bradley. That, that happens whenever I grow my hair out and I just say hello. I don't correct them. Because this man has a stellar reputation in our country, not just as a past media personality, but he has made his name known both in the political arena, in, in serving our nation in, in government, as well as in the legal profession. Mr. Bradley is not afraid to share uh, comments, opinions, take questions from the media, etc., to make himself available in many difficult cases to assist the Belizean people. And of late, he has been uh, helping the PCC, us as commissioners, understand some of the issues in the Constitution. And it is a pleasure to have him as our first speaker this morning to share with us his thoughts and his remarks on the preamble of the Constitution of Belize. Let us give a warm welcome to Richard Dickey Bradley. Good morning, everybody. Almost afternoon. I only have a few minutes because the professor has finally agreed to tackle the, the more complicated part of the Constitution. So thank you very much, professor. I have brought, before I say that, let me just mention, and I won't call no name, but the person who cajoled me into coming here this morning said that I will have an opportunity to be among teachers and preachers and Sinner. I said, well, the person know I'm among the third group, and I would be right at home among that group. But looking at the front row, the sinners have let us down. I just want to pay my personal respects to the editor of the reporter newspaper, who has been a shining light in this country for many, many years. Mr. Harry Larry, sir. <laughs> and the one and only Paul of Belize. I don't say for years, Mr. Paul Rodriguez. And my former boss, in a kind of way, we have with us the former Chief Magistrate of Belize, Sharon Fraser. Thank you for gracing us. 
I kind of know, but I will still say this. I don't know why you're not in the Supreme Court this morning as a judge. And of course, my good friend, Scott Stern. I have brought two books with me. One, I take it out of my vehicle because I'm always getting caught up in what is inside of that book. And it is my favorite book of all time. Sinner that I am, I read it a lot. But of late, I'm not sure if it is because of the beautiful language. Because actually, this is the blueprint that Hollywood used to make millions of dollars. Adventure, war, intrigue. There's even a movie on the end of the world called The Book of Revelation. There is a superhero in here. Not because he walked on water, he told people who had been dead for days to come out of the grave. But he brought a message. Well, I'm not the preacher here this morning, but he brought one powerful piece of message that we to love one another the way God loved me and treat one another the way we want one another to treat me. And if you don't believe that you walk on water or you actually take purified water and turn it into wine, it doesn't really matter. It's the message in this book. And I say that because a lot of people, sinners included, they know what is inside this book. And the other book I brought, which is the Bible for the lawyers and judges, I just heard shocking news. And I hope I never hear it again. And we changed that statistic to around 90% of the people do not know what is in the constitution of the country. And that has nothing to do with UNO. Yeah? That's just a shame on the Ministry of Education from the time we got independence till presently. This book is boring. But I want to start where the book starts. And in the constitution of belief, both the actual constitution and the book that prints the words, there is a thing called preamble. Because I'm not teaching nothing about our constitution, there is a need for us especially your commission chairman Shannon, understand this most important portion of the constitution. It only says preamble, but that is because liars and put those words. The preamble in the Constitution of Belief is a statement of the principles, the beliefs, the moral and the spiritual values of those persons who were around in 1981, stating what kind of constitution they want the new nation of belief to be governed by. The very, very important part of the Constitution because as the Constitution says in the very first section, belief is a sovereign democratic country. What is more democratic than the people of the country say what type of constitution 
we want the nation to be governed by. I was going to bring a third booklet and I had it in my hand and I put it back. It is the report of the Constitutional Commission held in London, our former colonial masters. And the leaders of the country in 81, we agreed and there were persons who traveled the length and breadth of Belize consulting the Belizean people. All the villages, there are some six volumes filled with what the Belizean people were saying they want to have in their constitution. And I bring that up because I expect the new constitutional commission to travel the length and breadth of Belize do everything they can to motivate, to stimulate, to inspire new generation of Belizeans to say what kind of constitution we want. Because don't make those buildings and vehicles fool you. Belize as a nation is not going forward, it's going downward. So the preamble is a two-page list of what our fathers and mothers and grandfathers and grandmothers wanted. And I can tell you some of the things they want to see their country have is participatory democracy, the dignity of the human being, social justice. Did you know that we, our parents they wanted to have a nation where there is social justice, where the resources of this land is not given out to Portico, etc., but is shared equally with all the people who live in this country. That's what they put in there. Only political is missing. Every other thing I told you is in here. I also saw that they want a nation where we don't discriminate against one another. One of the great things about George Price is that he knew he did not worry, he did not donkey, he did not over this country. He more than anybody else could see the unique nature of our country, Maya. The Mayas built their temples when, when your tribe, Professor, when the white tribes of the earth were still wearing animal skins. They still can't come out how, how these so-called primitive people can had known geometry and geometry and can tell you that in 75 years that particular planet will return to that spot. So, the matter of let us not discriminate against one another is what our ancestors wanted for us. I told you I will only be here a few minutes so let me read one of the paragraphs that make up the preamble. The last one, paragraph F, I don't see nobody have a copy of the Constitution in the audience. Incredible, I thought there were teachers. There is one. When the angel was going to Sodom and Gomorrah, he asked if at least 20 of them would have got the book to so make some progress. <laughs> there is one. Thank you too. Look at that. And a male and a female at that. Not a student have the constitution of belief in their hand. Paragraph F says that there is part of belief you have your copy. But there's a student. And there's a student. 
ผู้ชายตุสันดกเวียดบุกเพราะอะไรโยเพราะอะไรสันเม็กเม็กซินคาเจนลูกอะไรพระบาทเอฟเซ่ that the people of belief desire that their society shall reflect and enjoy the above principles, beliefs and needs and that their constitution should enshrine and make provisions for ensuring the achievement of the same for the nation of belief followed by these words Now, therefore, the following provisions shall have effect as the constitution of belief. I say that and read that because this is where I want to go. There is there is a doctrine which is which is core. That the constitution of belief is grounded and founded in a matter which nowadays the legal experts they call the doctrine of the basic structure. So that you will, nobody can find the words separation of powers in the constitution. Separation of powers is so crucial. The executive and the legislature they interlock, they work with one another. But the judicial section of the constitution and the country is entirely separate from the politicians and the bureaucrats and the ministers and the members of the House and Senate. There is a matter called the independence of the judiciary. There is a little bit of interference presently in the judiciary of the country. It's disturbing. It needs to be ventilated because we need to stop it in its tracks. Very serious thing to try fast with who won't be judged and who no won't be judged. And she now has to leave us, but she is in the Senate, and we need every voice to raise against this. Interference in the judiciary of the country, and there is another thing called the rule of law. You not find those words in the constitution, but those are the deep embedded principles of the constitution of belief, like they are in the constitution of many democratic countries on the planet. You cannot. Nobody can reduce, whittle away, make the constitution weaker than it currently is. There have been attempts to interfere with the fundamental rights and freedoms in this country, and it didn't get very far. But deep down in the constitution of belief. Cannot interfere with the core issues, principles, and protection. And if I didn't say, it, let me say it, that the preamble of the Constitution is an integral part of the Constitution. It is a part of the embedded basic structure. That the people who brought this country to independence wanted their independent nation to be, and the reason I tell you that, and the reason I came, I didn't come to mingle with sinners. Please, I meet them every day. I came to tell you that there was a little whisper, chairman and deputy. That there had been a little discussion. If you're a Creole, you know how the little discussion go. They start off as gossip, and then they start to call people names, and then they start to get into their personal business, and so on, so. But this least side discussion was some person. This I hear it so. This is not on the record. Some persons. 
feel like the word God ought not to be in the constitution of belief. That is some serious business. So I come this morning to say to you that you can add and improve the preamble, but you can't take out anything that is in there. Right. And so, in closing, let me read the first paragraph to take you where I am going. The preamble, which really should read the preamble of the principles and values and morals and the features and objectives of the people of relief, should have those words, chairman and members of the committee. The preamble says, whereas the people of belief affirm, Google affirm, affirm that the nation of belief shall be founded upon principles which acknowledge the supremacy of God. Can't take that out of the Constitution. The long sentence goes on to say that the Belizean people want their nation to be founded upon principles which acknowledge the supremacy of God Acknowledge faith in human rights and the fundamental freedom. Acknowledge the position of the family. The family. That's our weak, that's our weak of life, that's weak. The position of the family in a society of free men and free women and free institutions and the dignity of the human person and the equal and inalienable rights with which all members of the human family are endowed by God Almighty. So imagine that, hey, let me see. Don't mess with God. Don't mess with God. For two important reasons. That's not getting at the constitution, right? So, so, so you know, no religious fanatic put that in, you know. No moolah. There are two good reasons. There are probably are others. First, I can tell you, and Mr. Sharon can support me, in the work I do, which I do only for money, I don't, it's not the whole of me. It's like, say, oh, the kid a liar. And I'm more than that one. In the work I do, I end up bouncing up against some really bad people it make me wonder if there's a devil and demons going around. Because we lament how we could sleep with our windows and door open, how we could hang up your clothes and nobody had teeth to pan the off of the line. You can live and walk about and come from moving late the night and you could feel comfortable and safe, that world is gone. In coming back. Yeah? We're just being sentimental when we talk about it. They are really evil, wicked people in this world who will kick down your door, come in and rape your children and your wife. Some of them are rape your husband too. And they would kill you 
and slay you like if you are some kind of stray pack liquor. There are people like that in Belize. Shocking and frightening the way we take life in this small country. We have strayed away from the teachings that have kept us peaceful and safe. So I could go on, but one reason is that when you start to mess around with God, that is what the society will produce more and more of those type of criminals. And the other reason I have told you already, you can't take God out of the constitution of belief. So let me sound like a priest and say, let not your heart be troubled. You can't take God out of the constitution of belief. And finally, in the three minutes I have given myself to belief, <laughs> finally, let me let me see how to put this. There has never been such a significant situation as what is unfolding right now in this country we love so dear. What is happening? There is invitation for all of us in the country, in the villages, in the communities, in the towns, in the cities, in the schools for the students, in the church for the congregation. There is an awesome, unprecedented opportunity for the people of belief. Everyone away to say what kind of country we want to live in now, in this time. That is what the Constitutional Commission is going around to do. It's unfortunate that we hook on to this legal term, Constitution, because really what it is, is an opportunity to make Belize better, to say there are things which we don't want to continue in the country. That is what this is all about. We are only putting it, Mr. Chairman and members, in the Constitution because that is the supreme law of the land. And what is in there, anybody who breaches it or violates it, we can take them over to the independent judiciary in order to make them know you cannot violate the most supreme law of this country, but what we are really doing, we are not lying. We don't come to amend no constitution, we come to make the country better. That is the important message that this constitutional commission needs to get across to people. What you want to see. Done in relation to make Belize a better place. We want to have, principal, we want to have free education. No because of all you can go to college and six farm and university. And please forgive me, I'm going to finish right now. It's a lie that they can't find the money. Any kind of something today, they find the money. You saw this business unfolding on the television. Days before election, people like gobble up value of the land. Pay the government five thousand dollars for fifty acres of land and then sell for the coffee two hundred and thousand dollars. But make you apply for a piece of land and see what will happen. Go back the following month and say, I don't hear nothing. Hey, what is your problem? I may full out one application. We don't have no application, yeah? 
So should it be our God-given right written in the Constitution that everyone are we entitled to a residential property? Yes, why not? The politicians are selling out our land by the thousands of acres. Other significant thing that has happened. All these two things happen at the same time. This is this is so awesome. Forgive me. I finished right now, but I'm going to the reporter newspaper. The reporter, Mr. Harry Lawrence, I enjoy your paper, sir. I'm going to the newspaper, and what do I see? Council of Churches of this nation met and sat down and discussed for hours. And said that they will chart a new course to help us, the people in this country, to live in a better belief. Wow, don't miss that. Churches are going to join the fight to make Belize a better place. That is awesome. They even have here that they will make contributions to the deliberations of the constitutional reform process. All the years I go to church, where is Pastor Way? Where is Pastor Way? I got peeping. Okay, the bathroom is not behind me. You know, I can't tell you the story because I promised myself, I promised Maria. Maria is such a sin. It is she that brought me here. Give her a round of applause for me. Normally, I talk for money. I pay me to talk. She talked me out at that afternoon. <laughs> Let me end by saying this. Those two things, that you have an opportunity to make the country better. Because, because before I continue, let me tell you a story. I'm, I'm from the Creole, I'm from the Creole tribe. I want to go up on the south side of Belize City. You don't know it pain my heart. I was there Saturday afternoon. Just, you know, I don't want to give a long story. But, we all people need special attention. Please don't judge us by, you see the news, somebody of Creole descent, shoot somebody of Creole descent. That's a small, small percentage of our people. Creole people are good, decent people. <laughs> but during Easter, we just gone. <laughs> during Easter, we just gone. Every time I go to the for the kids, I can't tell you which key because for security reasons. <laughs> I'm reading the book. And you know, he said about the killing of Jesus and trying to kill a man who they can't kill. But while this man is on the cross, Not a far from dead. He punished for all they do on him. Walk him up and push the cleaner ahead. They can't be legal when they turn sick of water. All of that. One of the other one who has to be a Creole. Tell her to go down the place to help people. Help yourself, no one. <laughs> has to be a Creole. So, I'm not going to say what I wanted to say about my people, but I want to say this. Constitutional Commission, 
golden opportunity, please don't pass it up. Make sure they write down either the book what you want to see your country become. One of the biggest problems we have to take for the power from the politicians. When they want we vote for them and they almost say holla for you. Vicky, Vicky, holla for me. Now when I come to come see you, they say, you know they are happy today. These two things, the Constitutional Commission and the Council of Churches, nothing will come out of it if you, the people, don't get involved. Please, get involved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Richard G.K. Bradley. You, nothing will come of it unless you participate. I often say that the world is run by those who show up. The world is run by those who show up. So when it's time for town meetings, Zoom meetings, whatever it is, you make sure that you are there when those Town meetings come into your zone, into your area. Make your voice heard. I was a teacher for 14 years. And one of the subjects I used to teach was mathematics. And Belizeans are afraid, many Belizeans are afraid of mathematics. So children, when they are doing their maths, they don't want to give their answer because they are afraid that it's wrong. They're afraid that somebody will laugh at them. So as I began teaching mathematics, I began to tell my students, be strong and wrong. Be strong and wrong. Because it was more important for them to speak their answer in their book. Because whether their answer was right or wrong, I wanted them to voice their answer because that would be the only way that I would know as a teacher who needed help. And so we created an environment in the classroom where we all enjoyed the answers. Whether they were right or wrong, whether we agreed with them or not, and very quiet people were not afraid to be strong with their number and we were able to help those who were falling behind. Let your voice be heard in this process. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We move forward with our second guest speaker and I have the honor of introducing the individual who will be introducing our guest speaker. He is a young, dynamic, present, and future leader of our country. I want you to get to know Glenfield Dennison. He is currently the elected Deputy Commissioner of the People's Constitution Commission. And he will be giving the introduction this morning. Commissioner, please, welcome. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for the Council of Churches and the Evangelical Association for putting together this event and for inviting me to introduce our guest speaker. Before I do so, I want to just give some acknowledgments and brief remarks. I would like to acknowledge the presence of Jason Glock, who is the United Nations Development Program's constitutional expert. He's standing at the back there. Jason, please speak up.
is a constitutional expert in its own right and has worked on constitutional reform processes across the country, uh, across the world. Um, I saw earlier Dr. Carolyn Genity. I'm not, I'm not seeing her now. She is not here. She probably left. But um, Dr. Genity is one of the people in the diaspora who will be assisting the Constitutional Commission in getting the message of constitutional reform and as Mr. Bradley put it, um, making beliefs better out to the diaspora. So I just wanted to acknowledge their presence. Thank you. The Constitution Commission has two mandates. Do a report on the Constitution, a review of the Constitution of Belize, and submit a report on that, on that process. In order to do that, we decided as a commission that you cannot consult people about a constitution that they don't know about. And so we thought that it is paramount that we educate the people of Belize about democratic principles and institutions, raise their awareness of what is actually in the Constitution of Belize so that we can facilitate an informed dialogue. I was always taught that the saying you have a right to an opinion is wrong. The statement really ought to be you have a right to express an informed opinion. And if you understand the distinction between those two, then you understand why it's important that we try to increase citizens' knowledge of their fundamental rights and freedoms. And it is in that vein that I introduce to you Professor Robert E. Destro. Professor Destro is a professor of law at the Catholic University of the Americas Columbus School of Law in Washington, D.C. He studied his Bachelor's of Art degree in 1972 at, at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, and his Juris Doctor was obtained in 1975 from the University of California, Berkeley. Professor Destro has, has been a member of the Columbus of the Catholic University of America's Law Faculty since 1982. He has served as interim dean from 1999 to 2001 as the director of the university's Institute of Policy, Research, and Catholic Studies from 2017 to 2019, and he remains a senior fellow of that institute. His government service includes as a commissioner from 1983 to 1989 on the United States Commission on Civil Rights. He has also served as Assistant Secretary of State for Democracy, Human Rights and Labor from 2009 to 2019 to 2021. Professor Destro is also a special representative for Tibetan issues. Most importantly, for what we are doing here today, Professor Destro is a constitutional law expert. He has taught and practiced in the field of constitutional law, comparative constitutional law, legal ethics, private international law, international human rights, bioethics, employment law, election law, and remedies. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me to introduce the Church's Special Invitee, the Council of Churches and the Evangelical Association's Special Guest Speaker to speak to us about fundamental rights of the Belizean Constitution, Professor Robert Destro. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me here this morning. I, I'm just amazed at the energy 
and and Mr. Oh, sure. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, I'm amazed at the energy and commitment of everybody that I've met in this amazing process. I can't tell you how impressed I am. I can't tell you how humble I am to kind of offer my services. Basically, I'm a servant. You know, you tell me what to do, and, and I go do it. And, and that really is the, the basis of my comments to you this morning. The, one of the really, when, when I think about the comments that Mr. Bradley made, the chairman there, I thought, you know, this is a really tough act to follow. You know, because these are people who have committed themselves to the welfare of the people of this city. And when my good friend, Commissioner Zabinet, asked me to take a look at the Constitution of the I thought, well, this should be an interesting series. And indeed it was. Indeed it was. Several of our speakers this morning have talked about the preamble of the Constitution. It's the first part you read. And I'll tell you, if you want to read the what we would call the what we in the United States would call the Cliff Notes version, kind of the, the, the abridged version of your whole Constitution. It's in that freedom. And so what we have done, and uh, what we have done together, is to try and simplify a big document. But even if you had lots of coffee, in all lives, it would be hard to understand. So our job was to try and make sense of it. And so, as you know, the commission asked me, or I should say I offer, to look at the Constitution through two lenses. The first lens is really what constitutions are about. What are they about? They're about who's in charge. Who do we trust as voters, as citizens, as human beings, with the power and the uh, obligation to protect us in our families, in our lives, in our businesses, and in all of those relationships that make a country like Belize, the unique jewel that it is. And that is where we start. And so when our prior speakers have said to you, don't be silent. Speak your mind. Speak up. Go to the meeting. I would add only one thing stay till the end of the meeting, because that's when all the work gets done. Right? And so when you say, all right, so what is this debate about? This debate is about vision. It's about a vision for the future. It's your vision, not mine. I'm an American. You are the masters of your own thing. And one of the, the most impressive things I found in the preamble to your Constitution is what visionaries, the father of your nation, George Price, and his colleagues, the men and women of the founding generation, they love you. They gave you a roadmap. All you need to do is follow it. You can make, you know, just like any other, you, know, you use Google Maps, you know, you can, you can deviate, you know, in, in different ways. 
So it's still basically the roadmap for where you want to be. So I ask you the question, which I must confess, many of my former colleagues at the State Department never asked. And that is, what's a good outcome? At the end of the day, how do you individually and collectively know that you have succeeded in this process? And that requires negotiation. And that is why I think the commission process, which is being led by a wonderful and committed public servant, chairman, by members of the commission who are deeply committed to the communities that they represent, their job is like a translator. They're supposed to read the Constitution and translate it into the interests of the people they represent. And then their job is to listen. To listen to every single person. And to hear, not just to listen, but to hear what they have to say, and to faithfully represent those positions at the commission. And that is when the magic happens. When each of you has participated to the maximum extent that your abilities allow. That's when the magic of democracy really happens. And you, as teachers, like, like many of you, I'm a teacher, okay? and I'm a lawyer. And my job is not simply to speak, it's to be heard, it's to be understood. And that is my responsibility. My responsibility is not just to talk at you, and thankfully, my responsibility does not include giving you a quiz after this is over. So this is about the future. And so, as was said earlier about people being afraid to make a wrong answer, there's no fear of a wrong answer in this process. In constitutional law and in practical politics, there is always more than one right answer. Always. There are some answers that are good and some answers that are not so good. But unless you start to deny the principles on which this Constitution is founded, there's no wrong answer. It's what you want. It's what the founders of your nation gave to you as their legacy. As I said to you, they loved you. They loved this country, and so do you. You are the proud sons and daughters of that generation. And this work is not really, in the end, being done for you. It's being done for your children and for your grandchildren. Because they are the future of beliefs. So we are just the stewards of the gifts that were given to us. And at the end of the day, and at the end of our lives, each of us understands that we have to give an account for the gifts that we were given. And every single one of you in this audience and who hears my voice has been given gifts. We know from the scriptures that there are many gifts, but there is one spirit. 
There is many, there are many works and many labors, but one God who has asked us to share those gifts with one another. My God is a simple one, really. My job is to share my experience and my, basically, my contacts with all of you. Why? Because, look, I've, I've been around. I've been involved in politics. I've been involved in law. I've been involved in education. I don't have all the answers. I don't even have the big picture. That's why we need all of you to participate. That's why we need all of you to stay at the end of the meeting. Okay, so let's let's think for a little bit. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me uh, open up my notes here and to just give you a little uh, a little walk through what the process. As I said to you, the members of the PC are like a telephone switchboard. They listen and they convey information. And then when the time comes, they counsel together and they vote. And they present a report to the Prime Minister. And then the political debate begins. Our job as advisors has been to try and make the Constitution accessible to normal people. And believe me, that's not an easy thing to do. And it's an ongoing process. So it, it's only just begun. Now, let me talk about your role in this process. Each of you brings specific gifts to this process. The very fact that you are a unique person made by God gives you a unique perspective that nobody else in the world has had or will ever have again. So we need you personally. The first time that I read the preamble, I looked at it and I thought, wow. This is one of the most impressive pieces of statecraft I have ever seen. It was fashioned for you by visionaries whose mission was to create and sustain an independent nation. In a moment, I'm going to walk through some of the steps in that vision. But first, I want to speak frankly to you as teachers, principals, pastors, union representatives, students, journalists, human rights advocates, and public servants. The very fact that you're here today in an environment dedicated to education means that you understand each of you that you have the mission, you understand the mission that your founding generation set out for you. So each of you has two things to do. One is to learn as much as you can about the amazing legacy that your founding generation left you in that constitution. And before you start talking about it, I'm going to quote, the smartest person in my life, my wife, who reminds me that if all else fails, first read the directions. And that's what you need to do, is read those directions. The second thing is to share that vision widely. And with every audience, large or small, and especially with your family and with your friends. By doing so, you are playing your part in your nation's effort to build a better future for yourselves and the children and families of believe. 
In a real sense, everyone who participates actively in this process is lending a hand to build a great future. And if we can get, if we can flip that number, that we have 98% of the people of this country who understand the gifts they were given, and only 2% who don't, that's a resounding Now, each of you know instinctively from your life experience that the future strength and prosperity of this nation ultimately depend on the faith, the commitment, and the common sense of the people with whom you live, work, play, and worship. They are your audience. If you speak, they will listen. If you engage them, they will understand. If you seek to be understood, as St. Francis said, they will understand. So your initial job is to educate yourself. Now, once that homework is done, your real purpose and mission is to encourage your fellow citizens to dream. And I'm serious about that. To dream of a future in which your dual nation teaches the reader by example of how a democratic, sovereign people work together to build a future. Your common mission, as expressed in the preamble itself, is to build a future in which every member of the society is valued as an individual with unique gifts, who is encouraged to work together in service to family, to their immediate communities, and in service to the present national effort to reassert and reaffirm the sovereignty of the people of Belize. Now, please allow me to ask you for a second, and for those of you who actually have the Constitution or the guide, or if you have it on your phone, that's just as good, uh, that, the, that when, when somebody asks you, okay, what does this Constitution say? What does it do? Right? You can honestly say, and now I'm drawing on the freedom, that it affirms the sovereignty and independence of this nation. Not only from its former rulers, but from those who would use more modern forms of predatory behavior, whether those be financial or digital tools, to impose a vision of the future that differs from your own. Sovereignty is about you and about the vision of this community. And don't ever imagine that that battle is over. That battle continues to this day. And what is that vision? Well, it affirms that the rights of the people of this country and of the world are God-given. That every single one of us shares those God-given rights. But that only you, as citizens of Belize, have the right to participate in your own government. I don't. I can be helpful, but I'm not a member of this community. It affirms, really, a very important principle that I was reminded by two friends, one of whom is a Jewish rabbi, the other of whom is an Iranian Ayatollah, that unless we recognize the sovereignty of God, there is no human right. Constitutions define and limit the power of the people that you put in office, that you have given the, the responsibility 
to help you achieve your goals. Now, I am from the Midwestern part of the United States. I grew up in Ohio. And in the Midwest, we have a statement, and of course, anybody who's seen an American dollar knows that it says, in God we trust. Well, here in the, in the Midwest, where I grew up, it says, yeah, that's right. In God we trust, everybody else pays cash. And that's the attitude you need to bring to the table here. A healthy, inquiring skepticism of everybody who comes and says, I'm here to help, including me. The preamble expressly reflects and affirms the principles of social justice. It recognizes that the economic health and well-being of the nation depends on the dignity and respect we give to the people who make events like this possible. People work. We were told when Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden that we had to work. And we must understand that the wealth of our nation depends inevitably on the respect we give to the people who provide the services on which we depend every single day. Properly understood, a constitution is a covenant. It is a sacred promise that a government will abide by the rule of law. When it does, the people hardly notice. That's why 98% of the people in the country have never read the Constitution. But it's like the air that we breathe. We simply take it for granted. But when the government does not respect the rule of law, or when it fails to enforce it in our communities, we notice almost immediately that there's something wrong. As one wise lawyer put it yesterday, the problem can be as simple as the optics aren't right. As a wise investment banker reminded me a few weeks ago, London became a world-class financial center because its leaders were committed to the rule of law. And investors understood that they could count on the law to protect them. And then when, for whatever reason, investors can't trust the commitment of leaders to the principles embodied in the Constitution, the party is over. This is where the opportunity lies. Your founding generation understood that the financial well-being of the country depends on the well-being and prosperity of every single person in this country. But they left to your government, they left it to your government to make that vision happen. That's what democracies do. And herein lies the promise of the present moment. You can be proud of your constitution. You can dream of a future in which Belize takes its rightful place as a leader of nations whose borders are the shore of the Caribbean Sea. You can build that future within the structure of your Constitution if, and only if, you take each of the rights and obligations it affirms very seriously, embody them in legislation, and make your courts the envy of the region for their efficient and timely rulings on the law. Your Constitution reaffirms the belief that Belize is and shall remain a fully democratic society in which lawfully constituted authority serves the health and well-being of every one of you. What this means in practice is that your government is responsible for making and enforcing rules that apply equally to every person. 
and which actively protect the rights of the people to life, liberty, security of the person, and protection of the law. That's why we put together another little booklet that looks at your Bill of Rights. And believe me, it's just a start. Just a start. I therefore invite you to take a quick look at the three documents released yesterday, including Vicki Bradley's excellent summary of our summary. Each of the rights your government is obligated to protect provides a firm foundation, not only for your own liberty, but also for economic growth and the protection of your basic freedoms. Let me give you an example. It's not enough that there's the torture and degrading punishment are forbidden by the Constitution. The people of this country don't want to act. They want justice. Applied by impartial courts of law that are staffed with well-trained and well-compensated professionals known for their moral courage and their devotion to stand up for the truth. It's not enough that the people of Belize are guaranteed freedom from, and I quote, unlawful interference with privacy, family, home, or correspondence. If the law is either lacking or insufficient to protect us from online financial and social predators, we need rules. But those rules give us opportunities to grow. This country is large and blessed. It's got great weather. Why is it that a small country like Estonia, which is also a beautiful place, but doesn't have such good weather, is the center of the debate about digital privacy? You can do that. You can do pretty much anything you want. And we're here to help you try and do that. It's not enough to be free to gain a living through work, whether by pursuing a profession or occupation. If the government does not enact and enforce policies that make Belize an attractive place to do business. It's debatable what those policies are, but you're the citizens. You make the rules. I could go on. But I can assure you that each of the rights you will find in these little books is a golden opportunity to develop the strength, creativity, and enormous resources, both human and environmental, of this country. And finally, and Mr. Bradley made exactly the same point, your Constitution requires that your government and act policies that reflect these values. Independence from foreign domination, respect for individuals, families, and cultures, and an understanding that all of you are members of a living, vibrant community that is unique to this nation, and which together with your neighbors in the region will be the future for yourselves, your children, and your grandchildren. As teachers, pastors, journalists, and advocates, you're uniquely qualified to explain to the people who believe that the process in which you are engaged is nothing more or less than an effort to build a future. When you make that effort, you will, by having participated in the process, inspire your neighbors to join this exercise in self-government and in the reaffirmation of Belizean independence. When the history of this time is written, the writers of the future, that is, your children and your grandchildren, will note with approval that you have been good and faithful stewards of the great commission that your founders have entrusted your government, and which your government as entrusted to you. As I said to you at the beginning of remarks, I'm honored beyond measure to be here today with you. 
I'm here to help and to be of service to the people of Belize. Thank you.